What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of PS4 Jailbreak Tutorials, episode 7. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to run PS2 and PS1 games on your jailbroken PS4 on 6.72 or lower, or whatever the latest jailbreak is by the time you're watching this video. There could be a 7.02 exploit that comes out at some point. So yeah, you'll be able to follow this on any new jailbreak essentially that comes out for the PS4. And this video is part of a series of tutorials that I've made on the channel. You'll find uh, a link in the description to all the previous videos that we've done so far. So you can get caught up if you haven't watched them already. But uh, yeah, the PS4 has built in PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 emulation. Sony hasn't really used it that much, apart from the PS Classics, which there are a few of. But you can use the emulation on any PS2 game. Now, not all PS2 games will work, but... Uh, a lot of them will, even ones that are not, you know, officially available. So you can just download like a ROM, an ISO file for your PS2 or PS1 game, turn it into a fake package file, install it on the PS4 and try and run it. So there's a few different ways that you can do this. The easiest way to get a PS2 uh, game is just to head down to form.darksoftware.net where you can find in the PlayStation 4 resources section, you can find PS2 fake package games. So these are... Uh, fake package files that have already been created. They've already be, already been made for you. So you don't have to actually manually convert the ISO yourself into a package file because it's already done. You just download it from here. So there's lots of big threads that you can go to and download whichever version of the game you want. And once you have it downloaded, I've already gone ahead and downloaded one of those games, which is um, GTA, is it San Andreas or Vice City? One of those. I think it's I think it's San Andreas. So I went ahead and downloaded that from uh, the Dark Software form. So that is one way that you can get your PS2 games. So if you're going to use a PS2 or PS1 game that isn't already pre-built into a package file for you, you can convert it yourself. So uh, first of all, I would head to the psdevwiki.com for the PS2 Classics emulator compatibility list and the PS1 compatibility list. So this lists all the games that have been tested so far so you can see which ones are playable and which ones are maybe playable with some minor issues like some graphical glitches and stuff like that and how, how many other ones are you know just not playable whatsoever and of course you can also tell that you know some games are playable in PAL but not in NTSC so you can make sure that you download the right ROM for uh, the version that actually works on the PS4. Also, there is the same thing for the PS1, although the PS1 emulation has only been around for a short period of time since the 6.72 jailbreak came out. So because of that, there's not as many games that have been tested and not as many emulator tweaks have been discovered to get games that are not working, working. So you probably won't find very much right there. There's also technically, I think, PSP emulation, but it's really, really uh, unstable and barely works with any games. So that's why we're not going to cover that. So if I head back to the desktop here, I've got two games. I've got Grand Theft Auto 2, which of course is a PS1 game, and I've got Devil May Cry 3 uh, Dante's Awakening Special Edition, which um, does say it is supported, although it does have some minor like issues in the cutscenes with flickering kind of thing. But apart from that, it seems to work fine. So those are the two games that I'm going to use here in this uh, example. So the first thing we're going to do is we can see that the PS2 game is in a zip file. So we want to extract it from the zip file because it's the .iso file that we want for PS2 games. So we'll just extract that out to our desktop here. All right, and then we'll do the same thing for the PS1 game. And um, PS1 games are normally in .bin and .cue files, although I'm pretty sure it's just the bin file that you need for PlayStation 1 games here. You don't need the .cue as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong, but pretty sure it's just the bin file. All right, so now what we're going to do is to... Okay, so to convert PS1 games into fake package files, you're going to use a program called PSX Fake Package, which uh, you can go ahead and grab. I'll obviously have the download links for everything in the description. So we're going to run this application right here. Or, whoops, wrong one. PSXFakePackage.exe. So we're going to run that. So then you can select your region, which I'm not entirely sure which one is which. I'm just going to go for default. I don't think it changes too much, but, um, you know, I could be wrong, but... Yeah, generally, I think it's actually like a PS4 region, not PS1 region that you're selecting here. So then you have the scale so that it scales to three different resolutions. You've got 
uh, I believe this one is 1280 by 720 and then this, this one is 1080p so 1920 by 1080 and then this one is four times the resolution which is 4k I think so 3840 by 2160 so we'll just go with the default uh, resolution and then we'll go ahead and create the package file you can also select the 5.05 back port if you want to be able to use it on a 5.05 jailbroken ps4 and you can also select a custom icon and background for the you know the actual icon of the app on your ps4 and for the background when you load you know the loading screen essentially when you load the app you can change that to a different uh, a different picture as well you can of course just leave the icon and background blank and just create the package file and it will just use a default icon uh, which is what i'm going to do so in fact also the title of the game we'll call uh, gta2 and then you can also put in a custom title here as well because of course if you have two uh, games that are the same that have the same title then they'll conflict with each other and want to overwrite each other so you know if you create one ps1 game with this title id just make sure that the next ps1 game you make is you know a different number so that the, so that they will not conflict with each other and you can have them both installed at the same time so now we'll go ahead and create the package file and i'll just select my desktop and of course it shouldn't take long ps1 games are really small so we'll just so it's done already so for ps2 games it's pretty much a similar process so you've got this ps2 classics gui program by dark programmer uh, which has some uh, nice little boot up graphics and stuff. You can turn off the audio by clicking on the, the little audio icon right there. So this has a few interesting features. First, first though, you want to open the ISO file. In this case, it's Devil May Cry 3. So I'm going to select that. All right, there we go. So we've got our MP title right here. It's detected it. It's got the actual game title right here as well. And it also adds the image. It must download the image from somewhere and put it in automatically which is quite nice but you can of course replace that as well you can change the icon and change the background and also you can go into the file you can customize all the different uh, settings in the emulator you can also add custom configs so you can add a custom ps2 config file and any of that kind of stuff so if you want to tweak anything any of the emulator settings you can do all of that as well and then you just hit create ps2 classic once you're done Again, select an output directory and it will start uh, creating a fake package version of that PS2 game. All right, there we go. So we've got our games built right here. So we have uh, GTA San Andreas, I believe, which I got from Dark Software already made into a package file for me. And then, of course, we built a fake package version of Devil May Cry 3 from the ISO file. And we also built a fake package file for our PS1 game, GTA 2. So now we can just copy that out to our USB drive. Of course, making sure the USB drive is formatted in XFAT format and make sure you put the package files on the root of the USB drive. Don't put them in any folders. And of course, you can also install them using the remote package installer as well, if you prefer. All right, so once you have the games copied over, we can eject our USB drive and plug it into our PS4. And of course, on the PS4, we're gonna head into the internet browser, load up our exploit page, Head to 6.72 if you're on a 6.72 jailbreak or if there's a 7.02 jailbreak by the time you're watching this. Head on to PS4 7.02 or 5.05 if you're still on 5.05 and run the Mira unofficial or regular Mira or of course uh, Hen as well if you have the Hen payload as an option. You can run one, run one of those. So I've already gone ahead and ran Mira so it's already running for me so just go ahead and run it and then head over to your settings, go down to debug settings, game, package installer, and of course, install your games. All right, there we go. So I've got everything installed now. So if we head back to our uh, home screen, you can see we've got all three games showing up in here. So I'm gonna create a folder and just add all of these to, to our folder here. So we'll have uh, PS1, so PS1 slash PS2 games, and we'll add all of our backwards compatible games right here into our folder all right so first thing we'll do is we'll run uh, gta san andreas so of course there shouldn't be any issue with this because i believe this is one of the games that is already part of the uh, ps classics thing so so you can 
you know, buy this from the PlayStation Store, I believe. So it should work fine. There shouldn't be any issues with this one. All right, and there you go. We are into the game, just like uh, in my PS3 jailbreak tutorials. One of the games we also installed using the emulation on that. Uh, emulation should be a bit smoother here on uh, the PS4 though. So yeah, there you go. As you can see, game is running. But of course, no surprises there. We knew that game should have been fine. So let's try Devil May Cry 3 because this game, I mean, maybe this game's in the PS Classic store, but I haven't really checked. But either way, we, we built this fake package file ourselves using just the raw ISO version of the game. So would you like to continue? Yes. So you can see this kind of flickering that's going on during the cutscenes and the loading. And that's just, uh, you know, only happens during the cutscenes, I think. It doesn't really affect... Well, I think it's the menus too are kind of like this, kind of flickery like this. But this, this is something you could probably fix by tweaking the emulator settings a little bit. But it doesn't really affect the game too much because everything else uh, works just fine. Like the actual gameplay should be fine. All right, there you go. So as you can see, we're into the game right here and it's running fine. There's no flickering. I mean, again, the menus like this, there's a little bit of flickering there. But apart from that, the game seems to run absolutely fine. So yeah, there you go. That is a PS2 game that we converted ourselves and got running on our jailbroken PS4. So lastly, we have the GTA 2, which is a PlayStation 1 game using the built-in PS1 emulation in the PS4. So we'll see how this works, if this one works. Which again, I haven't checked the PS Classics. Maybe this game is already already exists as a PS Classic, but the thing is, we converted it ourselves. We didn't use the one from the actual official stores. All right, and there you go. There it is. The game is running on our PS4 right here. So we've got PS2 games and PS1 games backwards compatible running on our jailbroken PS4. And like I say, you can try any PS2 ISO, any PS1.bin file or whatever that you can find from ROM sites or that you dump yourself from a, from a PS1 disc or something and turn it into a fake package file and try and run it on the PS4. But again, some games are not gonna work. You're just gonna have to try tweaking the settings a little bit and once you do that, you'll be able to, you know, potentially get a lot more games running. So anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.